The following is a presentation of the Four Center podcast feed. As Obi Wan Kenobi once said, "Hello there, and welcome to Four Center presents Data Bank Dive." I'm Joseph Scrimshaw. I'm Cat Napsock, and this is where we, day, as the title says, take a deep dive or a dive into the StarWars.com databanks. We pick something wild, something weird, maybe something wondrous, and we discuss it. It's going to be a lot of fun. We did this for The Companion. You can check our original season uh, out on uh, exclusively on The Companion app if you'd like to. So uh, that's what we do. Joseph, let's do it. Yeah, I love the addition of a new W word. We've been saying wild and weird, and you just added wondrous, uh, and, I, and I like that, uh, because I think the topic uh, that I selected for today is kind of wild and weird and wondrous, uh, but also uh, scary. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is our first, uh, maybe we're getting ready for the Halloween season. Uh, we're venturing into wild, weird, but not just kind of silly bonkers, actually a little scary. Today, we're going to be talking about the Mandalorian Vault. Mm -hmm. uh, here is the basic info. Uh, if you are curious about where this is from, this is from the uh, final season of Clone Wars. This is the box that uh, Maul gets put into by the Mandalorians for transport that uh, doesn't end up going well. But here's what the StarWars.com databank has to say about the Mandalorian Vault. The proud warriors of Mandalore have many ways of dealing with off-world intruders. For a time, they dealt with force-wielding enemies in particular through powerful technology, including encasing their foes in a vault-like prison that could be hauled from place to place, much like a slab of carbonite. <laughs> yeah. So that's scary, but it already yeah. cracks me up, right? The idea that, like, uh, Mandalorians have, like, all sorts of different v devices for different off-world intruders. <laughs> yeah. And this is just the one that they have for force wielders. Uh, and I love this turn of phrase. I, like, it could be used to haul them from place to place. Like, it's, yeah. I get that it's like a transport from, you know, uh, uh, get them off-world to some more secure place or just get them off-world. But the idea of hauled from place to place, like, somebody could just be like, well, I keep this, uh, I keep this Jedi or this force user in my bedroom, <laughs> and then I roll them to the kitchen. <laughs> Yeah. You like my Jedi? Look, I got my Jedi. Oh, oh are you going to take it out of the package? Oh, no, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, the did Mandalorians have, a, have Jedi parties where they exchange their toys? Yeah, look what I got. Look what I got. <laughs> Mint on card Jedi. Do you want to swap Jedi? It's yeah. a little dangerous to take them out of the package, but we could swap mm -hmm. Jedi. <laughs> uh, any other thoughts on that database entry before we move into the wild and thorough world of Wikipedia? Or Wikipedia? Yeah, no, I... The, 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 the data bank entry, it's just, uh, it's very polite for something that's kind of, uh, yeah, like you said, scary and horrible. That, I really like that you said that because there is something kind of calm about the way it's being described. Like it's a piece of technology. Like, you know how they have lamps? Uh, they yeah. also have <laughs> yeah. uh, one person prisons. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you know, it, it, it just, uh, it tracks for the Mandalorians. They're very prepared, very prepared. They've been fighting the Jedi for a long time. So this all makes sense. It's just very nice. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have some additional information from Wikipedia. Wikipedia says a Mandalorian vault, also known as a Mandalorian sarcophagus, wow. was a prison device designed to contain force users. Developed by the Mandalorian culture, it was sized to hold an adult humanoid inside it, standing as a rectangular slab with angled corners, which was noticeably taller than an adult human. The vault floated slightly off the ground while being moved around, but had to be manually pushed by its escorts. Gray on the outside, the vault's door was decorated with a bas relief of a of Mandalorian warriors fighting Jedi with prominent depictions of Mandalorian helmets. A clear window in the top center of the door showed the face of the prisoner held inside, but also let them see out. However, the vault was soundproof, preventing a prisoner from hearing anything outside of their confinement. Uh, we'll talk more about what it looks like, but uh, I'm I'm so pleased that you're on the same page with me of thinking about this as like an action figure uh, display thing. That little window, that's so funny. Uh, right now, the uh, a lot of the Star Wars action figures, uh, the the Black Series and some of the deluxe mm -hmm. uh, vintage three and three quarter, are moving away from using as much plastic, uh, so mm -hmm. they are in cardboard. 
uh, in the Mandalorian vault is like this compromise where like the package <laughs> is mostly cardboard, but there's a little plastic window so you can just see the eyes of your action figure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't it's know a, if this is, yeah, I don't know if this is nice or evil. Uh, I think if I was trapped in one of those, I think I'd want to see outside, but I also just think, let me go crazy locked in here. I don't yeah. know. It's cruel. It, but also it, maybe nice. It, it really is. Like, yeah, if you generally ask somebody, like, would it be better to be stuck in somewhere with the window or without it? And I think for the most part, a lot of people would say with a window. But then this is such a spiteful window of, like, we yeah. want you to be able to just barely see what you're not involved in. Like, I want to roll you to a park, and I want you to see the beautiful park that you can enjoy. It's so spiteful. Yeah, look, and I, 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 along with a lot of folks, don't really like thinking about being buried alive. Not high on my list of things to think about. <laughs> and this has some of those vibes. Uh, and so I'm like, I don't know. Do just total darkness and sanity and get me on out of here or uh, a little ray of hope. I don't Yeah, I don't a know. little ray of it's hope. Dark. It's dark. It is dark. Uh, Wikipedia does have more details about uh, how horrible it is in there and how you might be able to get out. Mm. Uh, it says... The vault had four orange control buttons on the left side with one positioned above the others. Pressing the three lower buttons in succession from right to left would open the vault's door while pressing the final button afterwards would release the prisoner. The vault's interior was gray with illuminated circuitry which glowed bright orange when active. It contained a recess shaped to hold a humanoid with two armholes, two leg holes, and a spot for the prisoner's head. Removable wrist restraints prevented prisoners from moving their hands and a rigid gag moved in front of a prisoner's mouth to prevent them from speaking. The vault was capable of holding powerful force users and even if the door was open, fully restrained prisoners could not escape the vault without external assistance um uh, partially wanted to share that because i just love the detail that wikipedia goes into of like yeah. we watched uh, ahsoka press those buttons so we're gonna write it down in wikipedia <laughs> and it becomes fact yeah mm. yeah yeah uh did just reading all that about the restraints and the gags did that uh, upset you uh it, it's not making me happy look i, I, I you know <laughs> i don't want to fight the mandos at any point in my life and time uh so yeah um it's crazy. It's it's uh, it's so wonderfully brutal. It's, yeah. You know, Star Wars is this uh, fantasy we all love, and we get inspiration. And then you got the Mandos, like, yeah, yeah, we lock you in a sarcophagus yeah. forever. I don't even want to use the wrong space fork at dinner on Mandalore. This yeah. Is, yeah, this is very, very intense. Uh, so that's the overview. Let's get into discussing this uh, thing, this, uh, this box of intensity even more. Mm. Uh, how would you physically describe the Mandalorian vault? We, we have a, a general physical description from Wikipedia, but if you were describing it, Ken, and trying to get people to understand the essence of what this thing is, how, how would you describe it? It's a piece of horrendous haunting art. It's beautiful. Like the, 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 the bas relief, the, the, the Mando, uh, the keeping with a lot of Mando things. It's very proud. It's a proud piece of uh, weaponry, if you want to call it that. Uh, and so yeah, tall rectangle, uh, dark tones, at least on the ones we're seeing here. And this, this reddish light emanating from the window, uh, might just be Maul's rage. that's lighting up in this one shot here. We don't know. Uh, and like I said, you, I could see these, you mail away from these and collect these all, uh, collect all of them, collect all of them. Uh, uh, they, they are, they're little art pieces and I'd love to see a bunch of them. I wonder if, if they're different, depicting different parts of the Mandalorian war with the Jedi and the different, uh, you know, the victories they had. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think, uh, I believe I didn't uh, include it in Wikipedia. Maybe I should. I think the idea is that this is in, in maybe one of the last ones, allegedly, mm -hmm. um, that it's a, a rare antique from the past, not necessarily something that's like, oh, yeah, you see those in secondhand right. stores in Sundari City all the time. Uh, but, I, yeah, I agree with you. I think I think the part uh, of it that I would try to, uh, you know, communicate to people is it's like it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, a, a fridge you can get locked in and then, <laughs> <Yes>. you know. <laughs> Uh, you, you can kind of it's like if you had a fridge and you could see the eyes of the thing you're going to eat and it's staring at you angrily it's uh, it's, it's got that real you know containment fridge like quality but the art the art turns it into like this cruel toy box like where it's mm -hmm. like you know I'm looking at it up close uh, an image and it's it's a picture of the uh, Mandalorians tying up a Jedi and cheering it's like <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like kind of an 
you know, the same way action figures usually have an image from the movie or the character in right. action, but it's the total opposite of like, uh, yeah, this is what happened right before this Jedi went in the box. We tied him up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. And, and, and it's funny cause we see it cause it's mall that we're all introduced to uh, this, you know, with this uh, thing here that it's mall inside and it's like, you're, so you're like cheering. This is uh, yeah, it's a bad guy, but it's still so brutal. Uh, it, it, I, you know, you're right. It's just kind of like the last vault is how they kind of describe it. And, uh, it's very medieval, right? When you go to like some museum and they're like, oh, this is how they tortured uh, prisoners that they caught in the castle. And you're like, what, what was going on then? What's going on now? But what's going on then? Right. Brutal. Instead of going medieval on somebody's ass, you can go <laughs> Mandalorian on Mandalorian. somebody's ass. <laughs> uh, so that that's a great segue into talking about the magic of the Mandalorian vault. What does it add to the legend of Star Wars? Why are you intrigued by it? I think because it, it it brings in this pinch of danger, this print, uh, pinch of uh, just a harsh reality, and and we're talking about these wars, and 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 it's you know, look, we grew up with New Hope, like Alderaan's, uh, ex, ex, you know, blown up at a distance, right? We don't get to mm -hmm. experience it up close, and you kind of live with that, and uh, all those kind of things, and it's the easy fantasy side of it there. Um, but then you know, you got uh, Baru and Owen dead in front of you. That always kind of <laughs> scarred me a little bit as a kid. So it's always there. You kind of need it, and it's also, by the way, on the Clone Wars, which is uh, positioned as a cartoon and still viewed that in a lot of people's minds with cartoon being that kind of almost condescending uh, description of it, right? Oh, it's just a Star Wars cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. They have something that they lock Jedi in. <laughs> it's brutal. And the fact that, you know, you could still read in the description a little bit more, you know, it, it reminds me of this episode. Maul can still feel the force still kind of connected, feels the order 66 stuff going on. So Mm. Uh, even more brutal. You're not, you're still feeling, you're just not alive. Yeah. You can, you can feel the galaxy, but you can't interact with it. Yeah. I, th I love what you're saying of like, yeah, Star Wars has a, a brutal side, a, a cool side, right. Um, mm -hmm. in, in obviously so much of what is uh, Mandalorian has been developed and defined in different ways, but, uh, uh, practically in the real world, it starts with Boba Fett, right? Of the, mm -hmm. oh, that's Mandalorian armor. And then Boba Fett's uh, own history with Mandalore <laughs> and being a Mandalorian becomes a, a really complex and I think still up for some discussion and in, in storytelling what that relationship is. But all of this kind of flows from that character design in that mm -hmm. badass bounty hunter. And this is like, hey, let's take that side of Star Wars, the cool, scary armor, uh, you know, mm -hmm. fighter takes trophies better than everyone and let's really drill down and that to me is the magic of of the mandalorian vault it, it captures something about the history of the mandalorians about how much uh fighting in conflict mm -hmm. is their history uh how much disdain and jealousy they have of force users right that idea yeah. of like we hate the idea that there are these people who are attuned to this magical field who somehow might be more powerful than us. And we're going to do everything we possibly can to prove that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> Including yeah. building angry boxes to capture them and make them <laughs> feel bad about it at the same time. <laughs> angry Mando box. There it is. There's a tab. I you know. I love what you're saying too, because it, it really hints so much of the history. And I love your highlighting hints to some of the bitterness, je jealousness, uh, 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 you know, that they have, uh, because it makes me think of, is it Fen Ra that's in the, um, Dark Saber Rebels episodes is kind of like telling Sabine, yeah, yeah, go get Kanan. <laughs> yeah, we're all on the same team here, but you know, he's still a Jedi. You know, we yeah. have this, <laughs> this history and it's still reflected uh, at, at everything they do. So uh, it makes sense. It just hints at the wider, deeper story. Yeah. And I think the, the other thing for me that I really love about it is that it's this story that the Mandalorians are brutal warriors, but also very artsy right yeah <laughs> it's like boba fett again i know his actual you know canonicity as a mandalorian is is complex but he's the starting point right so yeah, you yeah. start with cool brutal and then you go all the way to sabine right who is brilliant and an artist and and all these things and that those kind of extremes have come together to really create uh mandalore and that's that's part of what is like this is brutal and scary and in that but i picked it because it's fun and weird and i wanted to mm -hmm. try to understand for myself why i felt that way it's it's the fact that it's a beautiful prison right <laughs> yeah. it's we're, yeah. we're gonna 
take away your freedom and we're going to leave a little window out so you can never forget that we've uh, taken away uh, your freedom so we can stare at you in there. And then also, we're going to make the outside just beautiful, just mm. gorgeous. It could just be a little plaque with the force user's name on it. <laughs> Slip a piece of paper yeah. in there so you know what force user you got in there, right? Uh when I look at the Mandalorian vault to contain force users, the overwhelming thought I have is they didn't have to go that hard, but that <laughs> is what Mandalorians do. They always go hard, even when they don't have to. That's, that's what I think Din Djarin will say at one point. Uh, we didn't have to go that hard, but we did. <laughs> this we is did. the way going yeah. hard. <laughs> this represents a time when we made our prisons pretty, you know, like we had art going on as well as a, uh, the fight. But yeah, really, really does represent the Mandalorian culture, all facets of it. Yeah, absolutely. And with that, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back to discuss more of this creepy, cool, funny Mandalorian vault. All right, we are back to continue having some fun diving into the Mandalorian vault. This box of force user pain. Ken, how do you think it actually works to restrain force users? Without, at this point, I want to be clear, I'm clicking off any uh, research page. No, mm -hmm. no, what, what, you know, I'm going my own thoughts here. I like the idea that it is almost disorienting, uh, number one. So you're in there, you're not quite sure. Uh, the silence must be deafening. Now, again, you maybe you can kind of feel the force, but what are you feeling? I don't know how much that was related to Maul. Uh, I don't know. So I, I think I think it almost um, dismays them <laughs> into <laughs> submission. Oh, man, this doesn't feel good. And then it can disconnect you with the hope of the force uh, more than uh, actually uh, it does physically restrain you, of course. But, um, you know, you just feel it's hopeless. It's hopeless. And, and, and when you remove hope, what do you have? What do you have? So I think it's that. And then you, again, you have this false hope with the window. You're looking out. Someone could save me. And then you're reminded that no one is. <laughs> exactly yeah no i didn't find anything on on wikipedia um mm -hmm. my headcanon for these kind of things uh, that that they are just sending constant shocks and annoying upsetting noises that make like yeah. concentration impossible right because mm -hmm. the force is everywhere but you, you even a dark sider needs to focus right anger gives you focus to use it and even though you're angry you just you're totally off balance i, I imagine it's th those binders and that light is just sending constant little, like maybe a random shock, maybe one to your knee, one to the back mm. of your neck, one to your abdomen. You don't know where mm. it's coming from. And, you know, there's the, the real life, you know, horror of, of using noise as a, as a form of torture, right? Like, yeah. so I don't know what the, like, um, I don't know what the equivalent uh, in the Star Wars galaxy of like in a door knocking, an old timey phone ringing and a baby crying, like those noises that make you feel like you should respond to them and make you nervous. Like, are those noises <laughs> being played at all times? <laughs> it's a hollow, uh, a hollow message uh, pinging. It's that, or also like, you know, the equivalent of using like a heavy metal song to mess with people is sometimes throughout history in recent years, decades, you hear that. Well, the CIA blasted twisted sister at him to get them out of the house. <laughs> like what's the, what's the uh, star Wars equivalent of that yeah, playing in this box? Cause you're right. I'm thinking of the deafening silence, but it could be deafening noise. Oh yeah. The deafening silence would be great. Yeah. But mm -hmm. is there some, some really upsetting uh, discordant jizz wailing going on in there? Mm -hmm. Who knows? Mm. Imagine Oops. hearing that on repeat. Yeah. Over and over and over and over and over. <laughs> oh yeah. Cannot escape it. Um, I also think that obviously like the, the strong, strong metal complex locks that you can't just like reach mm -hmm. into with the force and undo, like all that kind of stuff is going on too. Yeah. So mm. Ken, if you could throw any, uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Were you going to uh, add some more containment thoughts? No, no, I just don't want to be in one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep reminding everyone. We're having fun talking about the Mandalorian <laughs> vault. We do not want to be in one. It's like getting the hot sweats here. Yeah, but that said, we don't want to be in one. But yeah, Ken, if yeah. you had the opportunity, maybe, maybe even just for fun, just for the sake of, of history, for knowledge, if you could throw any force user in that box, who <laughs> would you throw in there? Oh, yeah. See, um, it might be Kiati Mundi just to think about the things you're saying. <laughs> just a little He's while. a political idea. Whoa, slam whoa, me in the whoa, box. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, just think about what you've said. Here, here's some here's some time to think about it. I don't think the Sith could have wham, door slammed yeah. shut. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that. Um, 
I love how much uh, Wikipedia emphasizes that this is for humanoids, uh, you know, of, of a specific, you know, height. It looks like right. it could probably accommodate humanoids of, of different, like, actual heights, mm -hmm. you know, shorter and taller than that. But I just, I have this absolute comedy picture in my brain that Mandalorians capture Jarl Poof. And they're like, we're going to, oh, Ooh. is he fit in there? <laughs> is that a part of the torture where, like, uh, oh. they're... There's oh. some Jedi who's, you know, like Jarl Poof, like his neck needs to be bent or, you know, you, you try to put like a, a shorter Jedi, like there's that High Republic Jedi or Lynn who is like a, mm -hmm. a, their actual uh, organic existence is like a weird plasma, you know, formed into right. a suit. Right. But they're not very tall. So like, do you ever have that thing where like, you know, a Mandalorian's like, yeah, yeah, look at a, look at my Jedi in a box. And like people are like, oh, there's nothing in the window. Like, look down. <laughs> <Just like, laughs> yeah. Or do they do they redesign them? and move the window down to, you know, Grogu level, See, which is horrible to even think about. Uh, well, yeah, I was going to say Mando season three, maybe Grogu is in one and, and Din's got to uh, rescue him. But that's right. Yeah, it's very specific. It's very, this this window placement. So they've got to have different window options. You choose the one. Maybe this might be the last vault that was perfectly sized for Maul. But <laughs> I think there's a, you go to a, you go to a vault of vaults and you pick the one out uh, back in the day, back in the glory days. Yeah, I, I bet they were custom made, right? Like, I bet there's times where, like, oh, this bet. Jedi's like uh, seven feet tall, humanoid. I, I, I thought they'd fit, but just a little too big. <laughs> well, that's great because then the Mandos could send a message to you know, Caddy Mundy's got a he's got a forehead on him, right? So you, oh, yeah. he gets a message if he was fighting back in the day. We've got a vault built just for you. Your name's on it. <laughs> like, oh no, they're coming for me. Another form of intimidation. A we can fit your double brain in here. No problem. <laughs> no problem. Uh, I'd also be tempted to to uh, see Qui-Gon Jinn in there because I think he's the Jedi who'd be like, I can handle this. He'd be, yeah, he'd be one of the only ones, right? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And then Porter Ingle would be like, depending on what point <laughs> of his life, he'd be like, oh, I didn't fit into one. Uh, they couldn't get my forearms in there. Oh, uh, they, they'd had to use another way. <laughs> yeah, they had to try to use something else to contain me. Um, so... Uh, I think there is the intimation, you know, in that uh, in the databank entry about they had many ways of dealing with uh, off world mm -hmm. <laughs> intruders, yeah. not just force users, but also other force users. Does does the Mandalorian vault make you think about what other ancient anti Jedi tech the Mandalorians might have? And, and, and if so, what, what do you think it might be? Yeah, tech being the key word because you know, we've seen, especially in High Republic, there's a lot of uh, organic-based that threats to Jedi, and that mm -hmm. gets into different areas. Again, going to that hope thing and removing hope. Uh, so there's a lot of that, or, or, or fear being instilled. So there's a lot of that. But I, I like the tech side of it here. Um, I wonder too. You know, there's a locking of feet, or you know, how do you get inside their mind? I bet there's like a Doc Brown looking kind of thing they put on a Jedi's head if it could fit. <laughs> or wherever their brain is and just assuming that's where the force <laughs> is so it kind of like sends shock waves into the brain it discombobulates and it just you're not allowed to be connected to the force which is so, not unlike yeah we've seen like loading grade storm with some horrendous torture mm -hmm. and kind of felt some stuff like that so I, I imagine the mandos might have that i also like the idea of a mandalorian uh vault ball and what is it's a big kind of almost inflatable ball where you just toss the Jedi in the middle and he's sealed. And then he just, you can bounce him down a hill. It's almost like a Boomba, <laughs> like a Boomba with a uh, Jedi in the middle. Yeah. That it's some sort of like perpetual uh, motion Boomba that it yeah. just, it can't stop bouncing and rolling that it somehow physically, it goes on at all times, no matter yeah. what so the Jedi's and, just bouncing. And you make that boom, boom. It makes that sound the whole time. So you're just, you're, <laughs> yeah. Badoing, badoing, badoing. Yeah. 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 That's the sound <laughs> that drives the Jedi to madness. The endless badoings. Um, I, I would think that if this tech existed, uh, the Mandalorians would have kept it around. Um, I, I love that episode of Rebels where we really get the, like, yeah, a lot of the Mandalorian tech, uh, is built to counter uh, mm -hmm. Jedi mm -hmm. abilities. And I feel like the ultimate technology would be, uh, what I'm thinking of is the Mandalorian clapper. And <laughs> it's a device where somehow if they clap with armor, yeah. it automatically deactivates a lightsaber. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> so the Jedi's That's charge in, blade out, and the Mandalorian's like, I got this. And then it just goes out. I <laughs> think uh, like, that's great. I had a clapper for about a year as a kid. Our family had one, and man, that was, yeah, that was interesting. Um, that's wonderful. Mm. The, yeah, the clappers are designed for, for children to torture adults, aren't they? Yes, they are. 
<laughs> yes, they are. All right. We always want to make it personal. Uh, so, Ken, I feel you've already answered this question five to seven times in this half hour podcast. But mm. are you even remotely curious to get inside one of these? If it was on display, I can't do as it. like 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 we went <laughs> to that it. great Mandalorian, uh, you know, yeah. Book of Boba Fett display. If they had one for Clone Wars, and like it's just a prop, it doesn't close. Mm. We're in a brightly lit museum. Would you even try sitting in there? Mm-hmm. If it was an Instagram trap of like take your picture in the vault. Oh, maybe, uh, anything for social media. No, I have, um, (laughs) over the years, my mom is very claustrophobic. I've certainly inherited some of it. I I, I can go to a Qui-Gon spot and take a deep breath and be there. But in case of what I, there's, I have have a back issue and I'm I'm putting off going to my doctor because the chances of them going great, we're going to need an MRI are high Mm. and I can't face it. I can't face it. And, um, the people I know have gone to the, the, the full tube, you know, not the one where, oh, you know, they're just, they, your feet are hanging out, uh, the full tube. I, st- I break out in cold sweats and everything. I don't, I, this would kill me. Like the Mandos would kill me. I'd be lost. I, my <laughs> brain would implode. So even in your setting, even at, at Star Wars Celebration London, um, if the, I, I would, I would, I might do it if you were right there with the photo, because I would trust you to not prank me. Oh, so I got yeah. I got some friends in my life who'd be like, oh, bye. I, I'd kill them. I'd, I'd just get them out and I'd toss them <laughs> off the London Bridge. I, I, I yeah, I know you wouldn't do that. No, uh, you're no. not a prankster. You're not a pun man. You're not. You're not a you shock. Yeah, you, you know you 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 respect your audience. Um, so you, Grace, I'll let you take a photo. I just have this wild opinion that the world does lots of upsetting and mean things to you. So that's not a thing that I need from friends or a thing I need to give friends. The rest of the world's got that. i telling you, April, April Fool's Day is uh, you want to see angry Ken. It's that day. You take the one thing we have between each other, trust, and you and you destroy it. <laughs> nope. I'm not here for it. And uh, all that factors into getting inside even a prop, one of these. Oh, can you imagine uh, Mandalorians uh, on April Fool's Day? We have uh, just (laughs) tons of ancient, (laughs) electrified, ominous tech for Fool's Day. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm, I, I have some amount of of claustrophobia. Like I can handle mm-hmm. it, and then when I can't, I, I, it's really yeah. hard for me. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I also like always have this temptation to stick my head in things. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when I was a kid, we had uh, one of the places we lived, we had uh, stairs that the one flight was mm-hmm. solid. And then the second flight down to the living room area had slats and like I stuck my head between them. And then I had that moment of utter panic that I wasn't gonna be able to get my head back out. Yes, and then I yes. did it again, even yes. after I had the panic. So and sometimes when I like see a freezer on a tour of like an old house, I'm like, I know I shouldn't, but I'm going to kind of step in there. Like, so right. I, I think especially if it was a photo op, I, I'd do it. Uh, okay. I'd be afraid. Good. Yeah. Good. And I would need you there as well. Cause yes, I yep. know that you are not going to lock me in and, and laugh. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. We'll put you on the uh, force center Instagram page then. And uh, I'll sit this one out. <laughs> I'll sit this one out. Uh, so uh, my other personal question for you, Ken, if there was a coffee table version, cause this is so coffee table shaped uh, mm. of the Mandalorian vault, would you consider buying it and using it as a coffee table? Oh, absolutely. Now, now, now you're talking a uh, little legs on there. You can open up to put things in it. Storage. Oh, but and plus you can look in to see what's in there. Cause uh, I like, I always forget what is in here. Um, oh, CDs from 1997. Okay. Uh, that would be, ah, oh, I would love that. I, I would love uh, that. Yeah, I would. I would be very excited because it's a beautiful piece of art. Uh, you know, you have to have maybe a glass over it so it's somewhere flat. Mm-hmm. You can put your drink. Uh, but just having that one little window, I would have to rotate which action figure you can see through the eye hole mm. <laughs> all the time. All That's the time. a good point. All right, we are looking forward to spending seven thousand dollars each on the coffee table version of the Sold. Mandalorian Vault. Uh, with that, we're going to move to our final rating. We are going to rate the wild and weird and wondrous factor of the Mandalorian vault. Our rating is based on one of the original Star Wars weirdos, Lobot. So out of 10 Lobot heads, one being the least, 10 being the most, how many Lobot heads do you give the Mandalorian vault? Look, I gotta, I, I'm got i going to go seven. Um, it, it, it's Knowing the Mandos like we do, it's not weird to think they'd have this. But no. it's a little weird in Star Wars, and it's brutal in its own way so the fact that it exists and the fact that it showed up just 
showed up in season seven. Like, <laughs> oh, look at this. What's that? Oh, this is how the man does trap Jedi. What? Uh, I, I, that that keeps it uh, pretty weird for me. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think in general, you know, this is fun because we're kind of ex- uh, uh, playing with something on Data Bank Dive here that isn't ex- is explicitly goofy, right? Mm-hmm. It's scary. But to me, it's so scary that it becomes wild and weird and funny. It's a box yeah. that's so angry, it's funny to me. Uh, <laughs> so I'm giving it an 8 out of 10 because I kind of can't yeah. stop thinking about it. I took about a thousand screen captures of mm-hmm. Maul with his eyes glaring out of that box. There's yes. something about Maul inside there. He looks like a, a, an angry cat who's looking in your window. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep. It's so terrifying. It's funny. So I'm going eight out of 10 Lobot heads. Love it. Love it. All right. Uh, Ken, where can people find you as we wrap up this episode of Data Bank Dive? Yeah, you want to learn more phobias that uh, we both have <laughs> or uh, styles of humor we just despise? You can follow us on Twitter at Four Center Pod. From there, you'll find links to all of our shows, things we do, link trees, websites, Patreon pages. All that stuff is there. For me, you can follow me at Ken Napsock or go to my website, KenNapsock.com. For you, sir, where can they go? Yeah, you can find me on all the social media. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok is at Joseph Scrimshaw. And for all my other comedy adventures, you can find my website, josephscrimshaw.com. For now, for myself, for Ken, for a box that is very, very angry, yet still beautiful, this has been Databank Dive.